of these programs happen. So the first program is from events in which we make decisions. The second one is from what people tell us in a position of authority. The third program is from the media. Movies, cartoons, television, music, in today's environment, video games, the general media. Repetitive stereotypes, repetitive themes start becoming fact, becoming auto-programming. I grew up and there were some cartoons on, on that are illegal today. I don't know if you know this. How many people here remember uh, Dick Tracy, the cartoon Dick Tracy? Okay. Why do you think it's illegal today? Do you remember Go, Go, Gomez? Right? Remember, <laughs> right? remember Go, think of, think of the stereotypes in Dick Tracy and some of those cartoons. You had the uh, the Chinese guy with the with the with the thick glasses and the buck teeth. You had Go Go Gomez, the Mexican. So you had all these different stereotypes from different ethnic groups. You know, you you don't see uh, uh, remember the little mouse Andale Andale Arriva Arriva. You know, you're right. You don't see that anymore, right? So think of the Mr. Magoo. Remember Mr. Magoo. Some of these you don't see anymore because they were very stereotypical. You know, uh, depictions of of ethnic groups in these particular cartoons. And it's and that really begins to program how we think and how we perceive. So we have we have programs. The second the second thing that that hold, holds you back. Is actually. Our programs from the field, and I'm going to define this, and I put field in parentheses because you can use any term you want. You can call field collective consciousness. You can call field the matrix. You can use a lot of different terms. And let me tell you what the field is. Surrounding planet Earth. Einstein and Edison said that there is an energy field surrounding and permeating the planet that they called the ether. They called it the ether. So if you look at planet Earth as a globe, it's not the atmosphere. It's something at a higher vibrational level. It surrounds the globe and permeates the globe. It's the ether. It's an energy field. This energy field contains virtually all the thoughts and emotions of every species on the planet. Listen, fam, listen. Humans, as well as all other species. When you put out a thought... It travels through the ether, through this field. If a thousand people are sitting in a room and they put out the same thought, that energy is magnified not 1,000 times. It's magnified a million times. There is a antenna transmitter in Alaska, HARP. Some of you are familiar. I talked about it on my radio show. There are a bunch of antennas. Each antenna emits a certain frequency, a certain amount of power. But when the antennas are next to each other, each of the frequencies collect 
to one another and actually amplify. And so when you put a bunch of them together and they're all turned on, they all have a very small amount of power independently. But when they're next to each other, there is a geometrically increasing progression of power. And this is this is very uh, it can it can it can be a, a very destructive or beneficial way to harness this and, and do certain things with it. People are the same. On planet Earth, we also have certain areas of the planet that are virtual key points where if a large amount of thoughts are put into the ether on these key points, they actually travel throughout the globe very quickly at an amplified rate. And affect the field or collective consciousness or matrix. And I'll give you an example. And this just happens to be coincidental. <laughs> well, I'll pull this over here so we can see. Just a coincidence. Let's assume that circles the globe. And each of those little dots are key points. And each of these lines are lines that connect like they do on this. But just, just, just say, for example, that you're here or a bunch of people are here and putting out a thought. This thought travels through the ether, but it also travels along these lines very powerfully to the next thought, picking up more speed and energy, which goes to the next thought. And so it hits the whole field around the globe much quicker and with much more, which much more energy. Okay. So with that in mind, the second reason that you're being held back is because of programs that are in this field. There are two types of program programs that are in the field around the earth. The first one is the collective decisions or thoughts of the people on earth. It's the, it's the collective decisions or agreements or conclusions from people on earth. So if we have a majority of people on earth who are believing and saying I can't make it. There's no way for me to get out of debt. It's no use trying. The rich will always get richer. We'll never be able to get rich. Only lucky people and criminals get rich. I'm not smart enough. You have to go to college. You have to know the right people. You have to come from the right side of the tracks to make money. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When lots of these people start believing this, this is in the field. Okay? So that's the first type of programs. So you have these programs that are in this field so from you have the people on planet Earth. I think we can all agree, it's not rocket science, but the majority of people on planet Earth are broke and miserable and and not healthy and not successful and negative just go to your job just look around right i mean you look around at your at the family barbecue i mean we, that, that's just in but it's it's the same everywhere you know the majority of people are are not fulfilled they don't have what they want they don't think they can get it and they make every excuse in the world of why they can't. Okay, So there's that collective programming on the planet. The second group of programs that are in the field 
are those that are particularly and specifically put there. More on that later. But at this point, you just need to know that they're there. Now, okay, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the field. It's a bad example and bad drawing, but you'll get the picture. This is the field. This is the matrix. This is the collective consciousness, whatever you want to call it. You... are plugged into this. You have energy connections to this field. These are energetic connections. Everyone is plugged in. Everyone gets plugged in. Question. How did I get plugged in? Answer. I can't tell you today. Just know that you're plugged in. So you're plugged into this field, which can be very, very helpful, by the way. It can be helpful in this respect because there's all knowledge is here. Right? All data, all knowledge is there. All right, family. Here we go. So about that. I was getting it set up on my side. But welcome, guys, to Mornings with Nano. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. Hope everybody is having a blessed, blessed morning. Um, I know you guys are wondering, Nana, what, what audio was that? You don't have it. Trust me. Um, it's not your wishes, your command. That's actually level three of, you know, the whole entire Kevin Trudeau series. Um, it's hard to get. It's even hard for me to send it because I've tried sending it to some people. Um, and only people who have, only people who have their name in that folder can have access to it. So like if I send it to, for example, Andy, but Andy's name is not in the folder, he can't open it. So I've sent it to people and they can't open the folder. So, um, you know, this is, this is different information. Um, I don't even think it's information that you can have access to anymore. I think that a lot of the information is newer information. This is information that is either you know it or you don't. You know, it's either you have access to it or you don't have access to it, right? So um, it's a lot of great information. I've been studying it, but I wanted to play that for you guys because um, that was what I was talking to you guys towards the end of yesterday's call, right? Um, it was about the collective consciousness and how everybody's plugged into it. And all of this stuff. Can people pass in level one? Level one is on YouTube. Level one is on YouTube. Your wish is your command is level one. Um, but it, you only get access to level one. You know, you can't find level two, level three, level four, level five anywhere on YouTube. Um, so it, it, it's a lot of information. It's information that you can't really, you know, tap into just yet. I would recommend for a lot of you guys, I know you guys want access to it, but you still, if you can't even tell me the five basics, you're not ready for it. You know, there's a lot of information that needs to be learned before you can start tapping into those levels, right? So uh, what I would recommend is go through the your wishes, your command, master level one, and, um, you know, eventually we'll be able to get to the level twos, level threes. Um, I'm finding a way to see who, how I can share it with everybody. Um, because this is next level information. But remember, like I said, at the end of the day, um, we got to make sure that everybody, 
you know, is ready for that information, right? Because at the end of the day, what's the point of studying it, right? If you have not yet even learned the basics, right? You got the, your wishes, your basics. Um, so what I would recommend is you guys master the basics. If you guys want to get into this stuff, it's good, good stuff. Great information. Um, and it's amazing, fam. So um, let's get right into the call. Um, I'm excited for today's call. I'm going to go over some something uh, basic today, but it's powerful. And, you know, I know that you guys have told me to, you know, do some basic information stuff. Um, but I want to make sure that we do so. But before we do so, let's practice some gratitude. So what is one thing um, that you guys are grateful for this morning? Type it in the chat box. What is one thing that you guys are grateful for this morning? I want to make sure that you guys are plugged in with it because it is extremely valuable information that we got to make sure that we tap into. And um, it's good, good stuff. So I'm grateful for God. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful for my family, my mom, my dad, my little brother, my goddaughter, Dariana. I'm extremely grateful for my team and all the leaders within my organization. Grateful for my brother, KD, who's here with me. Um, grateful for the morning routine I did this morning. It felt really, really good to do my morning routine this morning. I'm extremely grateful for um, Katie and everything that she does for me. I'm extremely grateful for the book that I'm currently reading that's teaching me a lot of valuable information about the mind, the body, and the spirit. I'm grateful for the whole mornings with Nano community, everybody who shows love and supports me. I'm extremely, extremely grateful for all of you guys. And... Um, I see my boy Mike is in here. Michael Gonzalez, grateful for you, fam. The success formula. Okay. And I'm grateful, grateful, grateful for everyone who plays a part in my success. Uh, my mentors, the company. Um, grateful for my brother Francis, who's on the call, um, and the whole squad, all the leaders within the organization. Um, and yeah. Extremely grateful for everybody, fam. Very, very grateful. Um, I highly recommend all of you guys to make sure that you guys remember what Matt Gribby said, right? Matt Gribby said something very, very powerful that I want you guys to remember, right? He said we have to apply this information, right? I jump on these calls and I talk to you guys and I give you guys majority of the time when I jump on these calls, I do my best to teach you guys things that are practical, Right, what's good, Karina? How you doing, sis? Love you, fam. I do my best to teach you guys things that are practical. What do I mean by practical? Things that you can go out and apply right away. Okay. Um, does it say still? Does it still say to be determined? My bad. I actually meant to write down. Let me see if I can change it here. Save education. Give me one sec. Let me just make sure. I'm trying to um, make sure that I change the. OK, I think we should be good now. Let me know if it changed. It's good on our side. All right. But so like I was saying, um, I want to make sure that you guys are applying this information um, because, you know, a lot of this information can change your life if applied. I know that it's a lot sometimes and, you know, it's a lot of information to take in, but we want to make sure that we keep the information basic and that we can make sure that each and every single day we are applying towards it. Now, today, I'm actually super grateful because today is my 30 days, all right? I officially completed 30 days consistency with deep work, right? I've been working 30 days straight on my success, on my inner self, and I'm super grateful for it, right? I'm at 30 days straight, um, and it feels amazing, right? Like, I don't think you guys understand how good it feels. Like, I can't even remember, honestly, the last time that I did 30 days straight, and it's Kobe's birthday. So it's even better, right? It makes it even better. I get to add that to my journal later on. But it just goes to show, fam, that, you know, all it took was for me to 
step out of the jail, right? Like we talked about yesterday, most people live their whole lives thinking that they're, they're, they're stuck in a jail, right? But in reality, all you have to do at any time and any point in your life is just walk out that jail, right? And, and I told you guys for, you know, the month of July, it kind of felt like I was in that mental jail, right? I, I kind of felt like I was in that mental jail, but just because, like I told you guys in the story, Houdini, master locksmith, spent hours and hours and hours stuck in that jail thinking that, you know, he had to break the lock open in order for him to get out. But in reality, all he had to do was open the door and it was open. Okay. So you got to remember, I felt like that back in July. And look, all I had to do was open the door and I've been 30 days outside, 30 days. And I stayed consistent with it and I didn't break any agreements. I haven't broke any of my agreements when it comes to staying consistent each and every single day. I haven't even really taken a day off. The closest thing to a day off that I had was this past Saturday. And it was because I didn't do my full self-care Saturday right? Like I usually do. I had to do kind of like a moderate one, but I still did my reading. I still did my meditation. I still did my journaling. I still did my prayer, my gratitude. So I still kind of did what I was supposed to do. So I I, I want to make sure that you guys understand this. You, you got to step out of that jail, that mental jail that you're stuck in. Go work on yourself and stay consistent and don't stop. Don't stop. All it takes is one day. That's all it took for me. One day of consistency, then I was like, okay, I did one, let's go to two. I did two, let's go to three. Three, four, five, six, seven. And next thing you know, I'm at 30 days. Think about that. I'm almost halfway to my goal, my next goal, which is 66 days. I got another 30 days left. So if you think about it, I need a total of 36 days. Days from now is going to be end of September sure that I stay consistent from now to the September to complete my next goal. And I have a lot of places I got to travel to. I got to go to Arizona. I'm going to Italy. I'm going to Switzerland. I'm going to Dubai. All of these places I'm going to be going to, which are going to challenge me to make sure, because if I'm honest, one of my biggest challenges over the years were staying consistent during my traveling. So now I'm going to have to make sure that I do not slip up and I'm going to be so conscious of it. So let's make sure we do so, okay? It's very, very imperative that we all work towards this so that we can run into 2023 and not just walk into 2023. I'm running through 2023. I'm going to be in such a sprint by 2023. It's going to be amazing. So um, I'm excited. But let's talk about what I wanted to talk about today, which is a basic lesson that everybody here should know okay basic lesson everybody here should know all right which is the success formula okay the success formula is something that goes over so many people's heads okay and the first part of the success formula all right is your desire okay that's the first part there's a formula right is i want you guys to write this down desire plus skills times faith equals success okay i want you guys to write that down really quick desire plus skill times faith equals success now i'm gonna break all of them down one at a time desire plus the skills times faith is what equals success. This is the success formula. If you want to be successful, put a one in the chat box. If you want to be successful, right? If you want to be successful, all right, type a one in the chat box, all right? Every single one of you guys that want to be successful, okay, this is the formula to make it happen. This is the system. This is the idea of it, okay? Now, the first step is desire. Let's talk about desire first. Desire is the starting point of all achievement. Let's make sure we get that down first. Desire is the starting point of all achievement. So if you are, all 
All right. We need what your desire, your desire. What do you want to accomplish? What are you working towards? Because you see, if you are on this call right now and you are not working towards anything, you're not successful. It's hard to become successful when you're not working towards any kind of success. So what I want you all to do is if you don't have a desire, start to think about it. Because remember, your heart is going to give you what you desire. Your heart will always give you what you desire. This is so important. Most people don't have a desire. Most people don't have a burning desire. This is so key. Why do you wake up every day? What's your purpose? Right? It's a chief aim. What is on your goal card? What's written on your goal card? That is your desire. Right? My desire is on my book. Right? It, I have the book right here, but it's written here. Okay? I have it right here on my goal card. This is my desire right here. My desire. What, what, what do you want to what do you want to grow into? What do you want to become by the end of the year? Who do you want to be? How much money do you want to make? What is that desire? Last week, we covered how to write a goal card. Now, if you have a goal card and, and it's in arm's reach, put a two in the chat box. If you have a goal card that is in arm's reach, which means you could grab it right now, right? If you have a goal card right now that is in arm's reach, the same way I was able to grab mine right here in arm's reach, I didn't have to stand up for it. I didn't have to go get it in my room. I, I, I didn't have to do any of that, right? It was an arm's reach, right? It's an arm's reach. Now, you see, we have 300 plus people on this call, but not everybody's typing twos. That just goes to show you that is that really your desire? Do you really want this? Do you already have it written down as one of your goals? Do you carry it around in your pocket? Do you have it? Did you did you follow my advice when I told you to put it on your phone, paste it all over your room, put it in the bathroom? Right. Did you guys do it right? Did you guys buy the index cards? I only saw a few people tag me on it, but did you guys buy it? Do you guys have them all over the place? Did you put them in your car? Did you put them on the ceiling of your room? Did you put them in the bathroom? Did you put it on your refrigerator? Where is it? That's your desire. This is what it's all about right here. It needs to be this kind of commitment to what it is that you want. If you don't have this kind of commitment to what it is that you want, then it is not a burning desire. It may be a desire, but it's not a burning desire desire. And in the positions that we are in, we need to have burning desires, right? Because remember, there's a difference between a desire and then there's a difference between a burning desire. Let's be real, right? A desire is something you want. A burning desire is something that you really, 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 really want. That you will do whatever it takes to make that happen. You're willing to do whatever it takes. You got to have a burning. I have a burning desire for my goal. Okay. I have a burning desire for my goal. I am clear on it. Right. If I were to ask you right now, what is your goal? Can you off the top of your head without thinking about it be like, my goal is I am so happy and grateful now that. If it's not like. You see how if I were to ask you, hey, what's your name? And you right away, without hesitation, my name is Nano. My name is Javi. My name is Tiara. My name is Adam. My name is Francis. My name is Kelvin. My name is Andy. My name is Shelby. My name is... You see how you can easily, right away off the top of your head, with no hesitation, no thought, no, 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 um, what word am I looking for? Um, just no hesitation. Right. There's not a pause. There's not a stutter. If you can't tell me that. Then you don't have a burning desire for your goal, no interruption, no nothing. This is what it's about. 
That's how I know for a fact if you have a burning desire for what it is that you guys are asking for. Right? Look at Adam's go. Adam says, I am so happy and grateful now that I am earning $100,000 a month plus providing products and services to people on a day-to-day -day basis. Blissfully happy doing so. Young Lee in the back. Facts. You always got my back, little bro. You always back there. That's my little brother, by the way. He's watching on, on, on Instagram. But you got to have it written down to the T. No hesitation, no excuses, no interruption, second nature. The same way, the same way you can say your name is the same way you can, boom, say your goals. That's This is where I want to get you guys to. Because if I see you at convention, if I ever meet you and I ask you, what's your goal? You can be like, um, my goal is, that's it. I know you don't got it. I know it's not a burning desire. I know it's not a burning desire. Um, let me think, bro. My goal is I want to make this. That's it. You, 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 you failed the test. Because you're supposed to say, I am so happy and grateful now that, and then tell me your goal. So when somebody tells me, Nana, what is your goal? And I'd be like, oh, my goal is I want to make $10,000 a month. It's a goal, but you're supposed to say, I am so happy and grateful now that I am earning $10,000 a month. Because you are so ha happy and grateful now that you are earning. You have to live in the reality that it is already done. So take this call as a way to remind you like, yo, Yo, I don't think I'm that clear on my goals. It took for somebody to tell me what I'm telling you guys right now for me to get serious about my goals because I got checked. I got checked once. Somebody checked me like, yo, what is your goal? And I thought about it and I and and I and I knew what my goal was, but I, I was I was a little bit doubtful of it. I was like, ah, is, is it this one? Is it that one? Um, and, 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 and it kind of paused and I had to think about it. And I was like, you see, that just tells me right there that you're not all there with that goal. It's not yet a burning desire. You haven't spoken enough. You haven't wrote it down enough. You haven't meditated on it enough. You haven't visualized on it enough. You don't talk about it enough. You have to literally make it second nature. Second nature because... Think about it. The first thing I did when I woke up this morning, grab my gold card. I am so happy and grateful now that I'm hundred. Now that I'm earning a hundred thousand dollars a month in profit, right? I write it right away to myself. Boom, 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 boom. Multiple times. So whenever somebody asks me, Nina, what's your goal? Right away, I can tell them, because I've read this goal card so many times, throughout the day, in the morning, in the afternoon, while I'm eating while I'm doing a call, while I'm on the call right now, right? It's on my it's on my thing. It's literally on the screen, right? It's actually covering, like, I can only see here because my goal card is covering this part, this part right here. So right here, I can only see, I can't even see the fly wave because my goal card is covering it because it's in my periphery. I can see it right here. So I'm always looking at it. I'm always thinking about it. It's always in my pocket. I am obsessed with my goal. I have a burning desire for my goal. And when I'm reading these, and as I'm reading these books, right, I'm getting a lot of perspective on how things actually work. Because when you think about something, remember there, when you think your brain emits electromagnetic waves, it's a vibration, okay? And it puts it out into the universe. So the more that I think about this, the more that I focus on it, every time I think about it, every time I speak it, every time I talk about it, every time it comes to my mind, okay, I am emitting electromagnetic energy into the universe, okay? That is then just like the law of karma, whatever you put out is going to come back around. Eventually, me putting out this energy of me thinking about it, what is it going to do? It's going to give me more thoughts, more situations, and more circumstances for me to have more of those things to happen in my life. Mm -hmm. 
that's how it works, right? It, it was talking about it in the book that I was reading today. Let me see if I could find it really quick. Yeah, look at what he said right here. He said, he said, raising your energetic vibration and gaining mastery over your own thought process is a lifelong learning curve, right? Many call the power of thought creation the law of attraction. When your mind becomes unclogged of 10,000 thoughts, forms, all that power is now at your disposal for the utilization of manifestation. What is he saying by that? He's saying that once you unclog your mind of all these negative thoughts of all of these things, okay, all of these thousands that were once directed towards negativity, towards doubt, towards fear, all of this stuff, is now when you become obsessed with this, those 10,000 plus thoughts that were once directed and being used for negativity are now being used for your burning desire. He said... When your mind becomes unclogged of the 10,000 plus thoughts, all the all that power is now at your disposal for the utilization of your manifestation, your burning desire. Right. He said human life is governed by two minds, the subconscious and the conscious mind. Ninety percent of your reality is governed by your subconscious. And the remaining is governed by the conscious mind. The subconscious is the mental structure which is constantly in action, even in, even in sleep, way beyond the level of conscious awareness. So what we need to be doing is we need to be installing this into our subconscious. Because if 90% of our reality is governed by our subconscious mind, this is part of it. Right. He says the subconscious mind is the highest projection of yourself, an aspect of the spirit soul body. And is responsible for most, if not all, the dreams you experience. Human experience is centered on conscious e evolution, whistled, being bounded by the alchemy of time. Consciousness is the realization of who and what you are beyond the limitation of form and mind. Right. So we got to understand that when you install this into your subconscious mind, okay, this is the highest projection of yourself. You are realizing who you are as you start to become more of what you desire, right? Because remember, when I get here, then there's going to be another level I can reach, right? When I get, when Adam gets to 100,000 a month, then he's going to be thinking of how, how to make a, a half a million dollars a month. Then how to make a million dollars a month and then how to make this and how to make that. And the goals change. Right. And then you'll start to realize, right, who you truly are. But because remember, it's not about remember, guys, I don't want one hundred thousand dollars a month because of the money. I want the one hundred thousand dollars a month because of the person I got to become to make one hundred thousand dollars a month. Let me make sure you guys get that clear. The money is going to be. Uh, a byproduct, right? The money is going to be a reflection of it, but I don't want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month because of the money. I want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month because of the person I have to become in order for me to attract and vibrate at that kind of level. And you guys are watching it full force right here. It's happening right in front of you guys. I'm on my run to that. So look at who I'm becoming. Look at what I'm doing. Look at the books that I'm reading. Look at the consistency that I'm having. Look at the things that I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Dude, I got my yoga mat right here with me. i never done yoga. I bought a yoga mat. I'm doing yoga every morning. I'm working on myself every morning. I'm reading new books. I got my journal with me at all times. I got a gold card that's with me at all the time. You, you, you guys see who I'm becoming? The leader I'm becoming, I'm reading leadership books. I'm so serious. Like, 
think about like look at who I'm becoming. I never did yoga like I did yoga in high school one time. I did it in college because it was required. But me, like me myself, and we're like, like, am I gonna do yoga? No, 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 no. But look at who I'm becoming. Think about this. This is the person that I'm becoming to do the thing to become the person I want to be so that I can attract that kind of money and vibration and that that living. Have you guys ever seen like, you know, these movies where all the rich people and stuff like that, how they always do yoga? All this stuff makes so much sense to me now, bro. Like when I look back and I look at like the way rich people live and like the way I used to look at it as a young kid growing up. And I used to wonder like why they would meditate and why people would read and journal. And, you know, for me, I used to think it was corny. Right. And why people would eat healthy. And I used to be like, ew, vegan food, plant based food. Ah, that's disgusting. I can't eat that stuff. And, you know, I would judge. I'm just being 100 percent real. Right. And I was like, that doesn't make no sense. But now it makes all the sense in the world. Dude, I got to the point where, dude, I'd be meditating anywhere. I don't care what anyone has to say about me. The other day I was meditating in a park and there was a there was a bunch of people around, there was a bunch of girls around. And I'm over here with my shirt off, no no, you know, sandals with no socks and I'm just sitting on the top of a rock like this, literally just meditating like this. Before I would be I would be embarrassed to do that. But I've gotten to the point where I do not care what anybody has to say about me anymore. Like, I don't care. Like, any, like, it's just, I don't think you guys understand. I've gotten to the point where what anyone has to say about me does not matter. Like, at all, at all, at all, at all. I'm like, hopefully, they see something and they get inspired by what I'm doing, right? There was these girls around. There were people having a barbecue over here. And you would think, like, that's not a good area to, to meditate but it was actually pretty quiet. And bro, I sat there and I meditated for 10, 15 minutes in the Heights. Wow. And, and, you know, all these, and, and you could tell that they were looking at me because I'm sitting there crisscross applesauce. And this one is smoking weed over here. And this one is having a drink and, you know, they were in their own thing. And I'm just there, like, <laughs> just meditating and just tapping in, but they, they but they, yeah, you definitely don't care. No, I, I don't care. I really do not care at all. And it was middle of the day. It was middle of the day. It was like I did it in the afternoon because it was on Sunday. This was this past Sunday. Um, it was like 2 o'clock. It was like 1, 2 o'clock. I'm telling you guys. But I make sure that I go out there because I understand the importance of this. And if you know the heights and if you know the people in the heights, from where I'm from, you would understand on a different level because I would, I'm thinking about when I was in their position and I was the one sitting down. And if I would just watch this random guy walk in, you know, take his, take his shoes off and, you know, he's grounding in the grass and, you know, he's taking a shirt off and, you know, looking into the sun and just meditating there. Like, I, I wonder what they were thinking. I can only imagine what they were thinking. They were probably thinking that I'm going crazy or something like that. Right? They're like, yo, what's good with this guy right here, right? But you guys got to understand that none of this stuff, Matt, none of that stuff, none of their opinions matter. I don't care what anyone has to say about me. Dude, I jump on these calls sometimes. No haircut, hair sticking out like this over here. I don't care what nobody has to say about me for real. I really don't care. And that's something that we all got to learn when it comes to ourselves. We can't, we can't be focused on what other people are going to think about us. You understand what I'm saying? You can't care about what other people are going to think about you or judge you. Those, they, those judgments and those things don't matter. They don't matter. They don't matter at all. Trust me, it. You have to like 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 the return of Solomon said you got to accept yourself for as you are for who you are. You got to make sure. So, when we go back to what I was talking about right with 
um, with desire, look at what he says. He was talking about how a large majority of people are stuck in the, you know, unconscious, incompetent level where is, you know, you don't know what you don't know. So he said a large majority are stuck in stage one. They hold the belief that they do not have the power to make any major changes in their own lives. And for that reason, could not possibly be creating their own reality optimally. What they don't realize is that their thoughts and feelings simply send out initial signals into the universal field. These specific energies are then amplified by the cosmos and returned in order to create unique life experiences, ultimately rearranging one's personal circumstances. Let me repeat that because I know that sounds a little crazy, right? What people don't realize is that their own thoughts and your feelings, they send out initial signals into the universal field, the universal field that I was talking to you guys about, right? These specific energies are then amplified by the cosmos, right? The cosmos is, is the energy in the, in the field, right? This is the energy already in the field. And it is returned in order to create unique life experiences that are ultimately rearranging one's personal circumstances. So if you put out negative energy and you're putting out energy of bad thoughts, negative thoughts, thoughts of fear, doubt, insecurity, you're having feelings of sadness, depression, all of that stuff. Remember, all that energy goes out into the, into the universal field. And then, like he said, these specific energies are then amplified, right? What does amplified mean? They're, they're made stronger, okay? Because like they say, whatever you put out is going to come back even more. So if you put out one negative thought, it's going to come back times two, times three, times four. That's the problem. And what they'll do is if you put out enough of that energy, energy is going to come back. And that's why you see that people have situations in their life that and you and, and they people and people sit there and wonder like yo why is this happening yo when anything negative happens to me anything in my life i right away think yo what thoughts did i put out who was i hanging around that had yo you have to pay attention to that stuff bro you have to pay attention to that stuff you can't just go about life like oh this happened to me and no 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 you have to really like sit back and be like hold up who was I around? What was I thinking? What feelings was I having? What, what was it that caused this to happen? You have to really sit down. Like when any, I can't remember the last time anything happened negative to me, but when it does, I right away, boom. Okay. Think, Nano, think. What kind of thoughts were you having? How were you feeling? Who were you around? Who did you allow to pour into you? What, what, what did you have any fears, any doubts? Were you insecure about something? I had to step back. I really have to be like, hold up. I got to look at the situation from a from a bird's eyes view. Okay, but it makes sense now. Because I knew I attracted it. You 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 could you could say what you want. You could be like this and this and that at the end of the day, you are 100% responsible for everything that is happening in your life right now. It's not your parents' fault, it's not your boss's fault. It's not anybody's fault but yours. You put that energy out, and that's why you're getting it. Regardless of whatever your circumstances are, you put it out. So it's going to come like that. I'm telling you, that's how it works. It really is like this. So we have so much. We have a few more things I got to cover here. But the desire is the key. The same way you can put the desire out there for this, for this goal. And every day you're thinking about it. Every day you're putting that energy out into the universal field. Think about it. I'm feeling feelings of excitement, joy, accomplishment, gratitude, appreciation. These are the energies and these are the thoughts that I'm putting out into the universal field. Now, the universal field is going to take those energy, is going to amplify them, and it's going to reverse them and bring them back to me in a very beautiful way. 
And that's why I've had the, the, the weeks that I've had. That's why I've had almost 30 people join my business in the last month. That's why everything is working in my favor. I'm feeling good. I'm strong. Everything is just there. You know why? Because of the energy that I've been putting out, the thoughts that I've been putting out, the feelings that I've been putting out. This is why this is happening for me. I'm working on my body. I'm working on my spirit. I'm working on my mind. I'm reading my goal card every day. I have it in my pocket. I'm writing it down in my journal every single day. So by law, all this energy that I'm putting out is now being reversed and coming back tenfold and is giving me experiences, is giving me the people, the situations, and the circumstances that show me that I am on the right vibration. telling you it works it works the reason why i will never tell you guys to do something that doesn't work this stuff really really works it really 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 works and i'm glad that you guys have a a front row seat to watch it all happen because just by you guys sitting front row is going to inspire you to go and do it yourself so that you can have a list of people sitting front row for you now because that's how it works. I sat front row and watched my boy from my neighborhood who slept in my bed, okay, who I've lent my clothes to, who I've won a championship with, go from being broke to making $250,000 a month. He has a Rolls Royce. He bought his mama house. He has a Lambo truck. He lives the life of his dream. He has a $100,000 chain, a $200,000 watch, all of these things. But he was sleeping with me. No homo, right? He was sleeping in my in my room a few a few a few years ago, right? When we were waking up to go to work and go to baseball practice. Right? And I see that and I had a front row seat to watch that happen. And I'm like, if he did it, I could do it. If he did it, I could do it. And that's my boy. I'm not just talking about this person on Instagram that I saw. No, no, no. This is my boy. So it's about the, the you got to see it. And, right? So the desire is the key. That's number one. Number one. Guess what? It's the skill. You go to desire, now you need the skills. If I if I just have this, it's not enough. Right? If I just have this, it's not enough. What are the skills that I need to develop now in order for me to get those things? What skills do I got to work on on a day-to-day basis? What work do I got to do each and every single day in order for me to get there? You see, for me... I know exactly the skills I got to develop in order for me to make fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a month. As a matter of fact, I've already developed the skills. I just got to put them to work now. Now, because I know we have people here from different platforms, different organizations, different companies. I can't focus on just the skills that I learned because my skills are different from what everybody else has to learn. But you got to find what skills in your profession must be mastered in order for you to become that individual. Because in every business that you are in, there's there's the amateurs and then there's the professionals. What are the skills that the professionals have that you need to develop in order for you to attract your burning desire? Right. I realized a lot of those skills and I worked on them every single day. Every single day, every single day I worked on, for example, in my business, you got to master the skills, the the network marketing skills. What are the network marketing skills? The network marketing skills is you got to learn how to invite, right? There's seven, there's seven skills for network marketing to become a network marketing professional. I'm a network marketing professional. There are seven skills, right? You got to learn how to prospect. You got to learn how to invite. Okay. You got to learn how to, after you invite, then you got to learn how to present the business, okay? 
after you present the business, you got to learn how to follow up. You got to learn how to launch. Okay. You got to learn how to promote to events. Okay. You got to learn edification. You got to learn how to close. Right. These are all skills you got to know. You got to know how to tell your story. All right. You got to master your social media. These are all things that I had to work on every single day because I needed to become first a professional network marketer. Right. I had to pro I had to perfect all of those skills as a network marketer. I, I, I consider myself a professional network marketer because I've mastered all of these skills. I can invite anybody at any time. I can prospect warm market, cold market. Right. I can invite to events. I can close anybody. I can present the business anywhere. I can present the business right now with no presentation. That's how confident I am. I could close anybody. I can follow up with anybody. I can promote to any event. I can tell my story at any time in front of 100 people, in front of 10,000 people. I can do it. I can prospect. I can edify. My social media presence is good. This is all there. I am a professional. So now, now that you've become a professional with the skills, now it's time to put those skills to the work. Now it's time to be in the field working them. Go out there, invite people to presentations. Go out there, edify your prospects. Go out there, do this, present, blah, 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 blah. Now that's all I'm doing. I got the professional skills. Now I'm just working the skills every day, every day. It's like a professional basketball player, right? The professional basketball player. Right. They got to learn how to shoot. They got to learn how to dribble, how to handle the ball. They got to learn how to play defense. They got to learn how to pass. They got to learn how to do all of these things. Right. And then what do they do? They work on these things daily. And then when it's game time, they put those things to work. And how effectively you're able to put those skills to work in the field will determine how much money you make. It's the same thing in my business. How effectively I'm able to put my skills to work in my business will determine how much money I make. Because you can know how to invite, but if you don't do it effectively, it doesn't work. I know people that know the skills, but because they don't play them effectively in the field, they don't make a lot of money. That's how it works. That's how it works in my business. So you got to know what skills work for your business. What skills work with what you're doing? What do you need to know? What do you need to accomplish? Do you need to be a good marketer? Do you need, you know, and then there's obviously other skills. I learned the skill of organizing. I've learned the skill of structuring up. You know, I've learned a lot of powerful skills through the time. You got to learn your skills. And if you're in network marketing, I just gave you the sauce. And if you're a network marketer, let me tell you guys three books you should read no matter what. Right. I always tell people this story. If today was day one for me in network marketing, I would read the first three books I would read is these books. I would read GoPro. I would read your first year in network marketing and building an empire in that exact same order. I wouldn't read no other book. I wouldn't read. I wouldn't read the Think and Grow Riches. I wouldn't read Four Agreements. I wouldn't read the Compound Effect. If today was day one for me. In terms of on a business standpoint. OK, I would read those three books. Number one, I wouldn't read anything else until I read those three books. And if you're on this call and you are a network marketer and you haven't read those three books. You are missing out on some of the biggest information that could change your life within the business of network marketing, because I know a lot of us are network marketers. GoPro by Eric Worre. Your first year in network marketing and building an empire by Brian Carruthers. You read those three books right there. If I were you, I would stop whatever you're reading right now and go read those. To be 100% real. Because those books do skills and personal development at the same time. A lot of you guys are doing network marketing and you guys don't even know what network marketing is. Biggest mistake I made was I spent the whole year building a business that I knew nothing about. 
Think about that. I spent the whole year building a business that I knew nothing about. I knew nothing about network marketing, but I was building it. I was doing this, doing that. When I read those books, I realized that I spent the whole year doing everything wrong. I was like, bro, I've been doing all of this wrong, shaking my head. Those three books changed my life. And I've read GoPro three times. I've read Building an Empire twice. I'm still finishing up your first year network market. But it's, it's game changing. Guaranteed. If somebody joins your business tomorrow, they want to do network marketing, do not recommend them no book other than those three books. Buy them for them. Here. Make this a gift. That's a gift package right there. It's a gift package. Stop whatever you're reading right now and finish those books. Trust me. I'm telling you, it'll change everything. But you need the skills. And that was number two. Number three is times faith. Right? So we said desire plus skill times faith. Right. Desire plus skill times faith. And what do we say faith is? Faith is believing in the unseen. Faith is believing in the unseen. Can you believe that this goal that you cannot yet see yet? Can you believe in it through everything? Because let me tell you something. Let me give you the hard truth right here, right now. It's going to be hard. And you're going to be challenged so much. You're going to be challenged so much. Because the biggest test that we must pass, which is it, guys? What is the biggest test we got to pass? Let's see. Let's see if you guys really been paying attention the last few weeks. What is the biggest test we got to pass? The test of faith, fam. Can you believe in what you cannot yet see through all the challenges? That's the biggest test. The test of faith. The test of faith. It's the biggest test you got to pass. Can you keep the faith? Because like my brother Millionaire Maker said in the chat, Faith that has not been tested, it can't be trusted. Faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. So if you haven't been tested, if your faith hasn't been tested, it can't be trusted. Trust me, I've already been tested for this right here. Multiple times. And I won't be surprised if I get tested even more but I'm ready for it. My vision is so clear. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I get challenged, I'm going to read the goal card more. This person leaves my business, I'm going to read my goal card more. These things are happening, the world, news, this, blah, this, blah. More, 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 more. Never going to lose the vision. Because I got to believe in my burning desire. Whether it takes me a year, takes me five years, whether it takes me ten years. Never lose faith. Would I want it to happen fast? Of course. Who doesn't? Who doesn't want it to happen fast? But we do not have that luxury. God will know when we're ready. God will look at me and he'll be like, you know what, Nano? You're ready now. Here you go. Until then, test after test after challenge after challenge. Test after test after challenge after challenge. If I don't learn a lesson, he'll teach it to me again. If I don't learn a lesson, he'll teach it to me again. Until I prove it. Until I prove it to him. That's how it works. I got to pass the test. Some of you guys got so much test to pass. 
so many tests. Every test that comes, I just look at it and I'll be like, perfect. Thank you so much, God. And God has taught me the same test over and over and over again until I learned it. Trust me. He will teach it to you over and over and over and over again until you learn it. It's so real that it's 11-11. That's how true everything I'm saying is. That's so you know. He will teach you the same lesson over and over and over again until you learn it. Some of you guys have been getting, some of you guys have been learning the same lesson for the last five years. The same lesson. You still haven't learned. And you will spend 10 years, 20 years, 30 years learning the same thing until you finally pass it. There's so many tests, but you got to pass them. So desire plus skills times faith. Times faith will give you everything that you guys want. This will become a reality when you're able to master those. I already have the desire. I have the skills and I am getting my I am getting my faith tested all the time. Whenever God feels like the time is right, he will grant me my wish. But until then, I keep my desire in place. I keep working the skills every single day with joy and love and appreciation. And every test that he throws in my life, I pass it with ease. And eventually, with time and things I must experience, I'll get what I ask for. It's how it works. This is how it works. Now the wish is fulfilled, like Brian said. That's it. I have my desire. I got the skills. I'm going to work the skills every day. I'm getting my tape. I'm getting my faith tested all the time, right? It's believing in the unseen. You, and, and the only way you can, you know, know if you really have faith is when it gets tested. Right. Do you lose the vision or do you keep the vision? Do you have a relationship with your creator or don't you? Do you keep writing the goal down when you're going through it? Do you keep do you keep doing your morning routine when you're going through it? You don't think I've been through challenges the last 30 days? Of course I have. But I still showed up and did my morning routine every day. I still showed up and read my goal card every day. I still showed up and read my book. I still showed up and did my journaling. I still showed up and did everything that was required in order for me to win and elevate and become the best version of myself. This is what it takes, fam. So it's 1115. Um, we're going to wrap it up right there. If you guys got value from the success formula, type success in the chat box. If you guys got value from the success formula, type success in the chat box. If you guys got value from this, this is what it takes. This is truly what it takes. And for some of you guys, this is just a confirmation that you're on the right road. And for some of you guys, there's places that you have to work on in order for you to think. Some of you guys may need to work on the skills. Some of you guys need help with your desire. Some of you need to work on your faith. You need to find what area you need to work on. And like I said, this is all powerful. This is all very, very, very powerful. telling you this is very 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 powerful stuff understood it could change everything desire plus skill times faith equals success equals the wish fulfilled simple and straight up how it works that's exactly how it works this is your desire you got to develop the skills and you got to keep the faith when it all gets hard. That's the hardest one for most people, the faith. Can you keep the faith? Can you hold that belief? Right? Because your faith will get tested. But remember, um, man, I forgot that. How did I just miss that? I forgot what I was going to say. I was going to say something. I had a had a little brain fart. Faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted. 
it's going to get tested no matter what. And faith without work is dead. And that's the truth, fam. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys so much. Um, follow me on Instagram if you guys don't. My Instagram is at long live nano. Remember, like I always tell you guys, be careful for the fake pages. There's a lot of fake pages out there. Okay. If you fo- if you get followed by any other page but mine, please report it. Please block it. Don't listen to them. All right. Long live nano on Instagram and then on TikTok. And then my Twitter is live love nano. Um, the three books were GoPro, your first year in network marketing, and building an empire. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Okay. And um, Instagram, I'm going to actually come back right here. Give me one sec. And then I wanted to um, ask you guys for a little favor, actually. Let me see right here. One second. Do you follow people back? Depends. Sometimes, for the most part, yeah, I do my best to follow as many people as I can back. Keep failure. failure and I'm going to post a reel. I want you guys, if you guys could um, go on my Instagram and show love to it. Um, I wanted to uh, post a little reel for you guys because I got some content on the way. Huge shout out to my brother Adam as well, you know, for, you know, all the great work that he does for me. If you guys ever need any work, any creative work, if you're in the Dallas area, uh, my creative director, Adam, one of the best in the business. Um, he is amazing. I would highly recommend you guys if you ever wanted any kind of creative director work, photos, videos, any kind of thing. Hit up my guy. It's Adam Ismail. Instagram, he's the man. If you guys could go in, if you guys could go to my uh, Instagram and show love on that post, I would really, really appreciate it. Um, it really does mean the world to me. But as it's posting, let's do a quick prayer. All right. As it's posting, let's do a quick prayer and let's get out of this call really quick. All right. So everybody bow your heads and let's pray. Father God, thank you guys so much for thank you guys so much for blessing us with this beautiful, abundant day that's filled with your grace and your abundance. We are so thankful for the information that you continue to teach us each and every single day. We are feeling all so good because of the vibrations that we are feeling on a day-to-day basis. The vibrations that we feel today are not the same vibrations that we felt a few weeks ago. We are going, we are elevating. Our thoughts are in a lot better place than they were a, a, a few weeks ago. Our feelings are a lot better. Everything is in alignment. And a lot of people are really growing and, and tapping into new levels of consciousness that they didn't have access to before. And we are just so thankful that you've played a huge, huge part in making all of this happen. And I know that there is so much more that is coming on the way for us, God. So we just want to thank you ahead of time for everything that you've done for us already, for clearing us of all the energies that don't benefit us, for eliminating the people in our lives that weren't there to benefit us for the time being, and for always being there for us through the tough times, through the challenges, through the days where it gets dark. You've always been there for us. So we want to thank you for that. But we also want to thank you for all the abundance that's coming for us. We want to thank you for all the breakthroughs, all the quantum leaps that we are all about to experience due to all the work that we're putting in now. God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much for all that you do for us. You are the best leader we could ever ask for. And we are forever thankful and forever grateful for all that you do for us each and every single day. We pray that you continue to guide us and show us the way. And for anyone that does need your guidance and help at this very point in time, we ask that you put your hand over them and guide them, Father. So let's go out and have a great, great day filled with love and abundance. We appreciate you and we love you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, fam. So I just dropped my reel. 
all right, on my Instagram. It just posted. If you guys can please go show me some love so we can get the algorithm out. I want this post to really blow up. Um, I want people to hear the message. I think you guys could get a lot from the message. Um, you know, if you guys can just in the chat, in the comment section, what was one thing that you got from what I said? Right. That's all it is. Comment one thing that you got from what it was that I said right there. And I promise you guys it'll be next level. The information that we get from that. All right, fam. So my Instagram is at long live nano. I'm going to be spreading the word, doing it all as it happens. But just know that life is going to continue to grow. We're going to continue to elevate and great things are coming for us each and every single day. All right, fam. So enjoy the rest of your day. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Let's connect, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for another episode of Mornings with Nano. God bless, fam.